Hello, hello guys and welcome back to some more FM 2022. We are playing with the Bohemians in the Czechish Republic and we have an episode where it's all about, well, transfers and, you know, pre-season stuff. Mostly transfers, looking at players. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you don't like that, well, jump over it and get into the next season where we're gonna play a game or maybe two or, I don't know, three maybe. Nah, probably just two. <laughs> But yeah, right now it's all about what happened in the transfers and uh, well, it's not over. It, 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 that could still a lot be happening because the transfers, uh, the, the, you know, the uh, the window is not closed. But what we've done so far at least and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it went so far. So uh, let's get through it. We're starting with the release players. We have a couple. We have Kubala, Dera, Sutil and Jekovic. Um So, <laughs> well... Here's the thing with, uh, yeah, I didn't get any money for these guys, but I did get money for a lot of other guys, right? So some will bring us money, some will just be released when their contract is running out. That's just how it is. And overall, right now, I am probably to the positive side about all of our signings throughout the uh, seasons. We are definitely in the plus when it comes to that. So it's okay. It's okay to get to let these guys go. It's okay. I mean, yeah, Dara, he cost us a lot of money when we bought him. But 240k, I think it was, we bought him for. That is not a lot of money anymore. So <laughs> so that's all good. So that's the release player. So let's move on to something a little bit more exciting, which is the players we have sold. We have already talked about him once, but he has gone now, Traoré. He has left up for 500k to Sparta Prague. I mean, thank you. I'll take the 500k and move on. He's a foreigner. He would never be a homegrown. Um, I mean, he do have some decent abilities to him. He's fairly ambitious, level-headed. But yeah, I got other players that are way better than him. So bye-bye. Turning House has also left us. He was out on loan all season and he had not a mandatory one, but uh, an option to buy him for 66k. And they pulled the trigger. I don't... Who was it? Uh, Jablonek. Jablonek. They pulled the trigger. Probably a really good deal for them, to be honest. I think he's a very solid player. So 66k, as you can see here. That's pretty cheap. That is actually pretty cheap. I think it's about what we also gave for him. Um, no, we got him for free. So yeah, they got him for 66k. So well well done them. I think they got a really good player on their uh, hand there. So uh, see you around, Kuning House. I mean, we will see him in the league, I think. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see him in the league. Janosek has left us. He wanted a new contract. I was not having it because he wanted crazy money. And uh, he's gone. There we go. One million. We got one million for him. So happy days. Yep, you can see here he got some crazy wages, but uh, you know what? He wanted even more crazy wages when uh, we were in contract with him. And you could see in the statistics in the last episode that he was probably not that great either. Uh, he's okay, but uh, I think we could do one better and brought in some new ones instead. So he's gone, one million. I'll take the money and move on. Wesley has also left us. I'm a little bit surprised about this one. Um, I got two million for this guy. He has gone back to Brazil for 2 million. Lovely. I couldn't have asked for anything more. <laughs> he, he looks like a really good player, but he just... I mean, and he was okay. Don't get me wrong. He was, he was doing okay. And uh, I should probably have played him a little bit more. But uh, getting 2 million, I, I'll, I'll take that money and, uh, and run, run really far with it. Right? I'll run really far with that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's great. Budinski has also left us. Finally, I would say. He's been in our B squad out on loan so many times that I can't even remember it. How many times? Uh, quite a few times. Uh, actually... Not that many, but <laughs> uh, small loss on this guy. 48k, 23. We got 23 back. It's, it's not a good deal for us, but sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. And this one we lost. Um, he looked like a pretty decent player when he came in, but he just never really got the level. So he's gone. But Darker is also gone, finally. Um, yeah, <laughs> 31. And uh, we actually got some decent money for him. What was it? What was it? It was a mandatory fee. 56k. I mean, sure, I'll take 56k for a, a k for a 31 year old. That's for sure, especially with his abilities. So uh, yeah, that was a mandatory fee in his uh, loan deal. So there we go. He is also gone. Now, if we go back and uh, take a look, 
at some other things here. We also have Starek out on loan. We could have used him, but he's out on loan. We also have... Let's see here. We got the, uh, an Indefi. He's going out on free. I couldn't really get any money for him. And uh, you know what? He had he was on 2,200 wages. So he is gone, Indefi. And we have a couple of loan deals going. Uh, actually, this is a guy we need to look at later on. And we have Envrela going out on loan. So And Terra Grossa, of course, went uh, went away. We already knew that he was going to go. Terra Grossa. He's going back to Brazil. And then another loan deal here with an option to buy Brahwood. I don't know how much it actually was I landed on. The loan is a future fee of 45, but it's optional. Okay, it's not a mandatory. 45k on uh, optional here for uh, for him, which is also a loss for us, but it is what it is. But we don't know if they're going to pull that one. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a couple of uh, other deals done. And uh, there could be more coming, right? There could be more coming. Also Velchik. Velchik is also one of those. No, that is that. What? First, yeah, that's also one. Uh, that was also a mandatory fee for uh, Carol Vilschik, who is, was actually one of our youngsters. Was that a mandatory fee or was it? Uh, I don't remember. It must have been a mandatory fee. I think it was. It must have been. I, I haven't. I ha at least I haven't pulled this one. So I think it was a mandatory fee in uh, his uh, in his loan deal. No, they didn't loan him. I'm confused. How did I get rid of this guy? <laughs> Oh no, I don't know what happened here, but he's gone. Karel Valzjek is also gone. Yeah, it, it's 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 okay. It's okay. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, I don't think he was that good either, so that's that's all fine. You guys are gonna think me mad when you see what I have done when it comes to the incomings. That's um, yeah. We're gonna take a look at the incomings. The first one here is Kjetil Haug. He is our new first choice goalkeeper. Yep. <laughs> And he is expensive. He is 5,000 wages expensive for only two years. Um, he is a better goalkeeper than uh, Mikolek. Definitely is. He is uh, not a whole, whole lot better, but he is better. His statistics, I checked his statistics out from the Norwegian leagues. No, that was actually, that's the Danish leagues. Uh, uh, was it? No, it was the Norwegian leagues. And it looked pretty damn solid, right? It looks pretty damn solid. Also, I checked up on some of the other uh, attributes. He looks very, very... Uh, he looks way better than Mikulic in those, uh, in, the, in that sense. So, uh, Mikulic, he's still in the club. And I think Mikulic is going to become cup keeper, right? He's going to be taking over in the cups. So, we will rotate them a little bit until we have sold either this guy or Mikulic. Um, for a good profit, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we we gave uh, he cost. Uh, I think you saw it in here, three hundred and twenty-five k. So even that is uh, not really that cheap. But actually, it's one of the cheapest goalkeepers I could get where we had you know this kind of goalkeeper coming in. So there we go. That's uh, that's a new goalkeeper. So let's move on. This one is uh, this is probably one of the best deals I've done to be honest. He is called Andres Andrade. He's 27 years old. He cost me 2.6k, 3,800 wages, running for three years in contract. And look at those numbers. Absolutely fantastic. Wing back. I mean, this is probably the best deal of uh, my transfers. Honestly, he uh, he looks rock solid. He can even go in and play a central defender on the left-hand side. He's even covering that role. It's it's like he's that good. And he cost me 2.6k <laughs> from Salzburg. Uh, they, 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 they bought him for 4.1 million. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, this is a deal. This is a steal. <laughs> Love it. He, uh, he's probably my starter, even over Finson. Finson hasn't signed a new contract, so... Uh, this guy could take over where Finson is gonna... I don't know if Finson is gonna leave us or... But actually, I made Finson our vice captain. But I don't know. He doesn't really want to take the contract that I want to give him. So uh, I'm a little bit worried about that situation. But uh, at least we have a really good player over there now. So uh, that's really solid. Here we go. There is always gonna be a bad signing, right? Always. There is always gonna be one of those where you think, Oh, I should probably not have done that. This is that guy. <laughs> Icelandic Christiansson. He is an inside forward. Um, he's on probably the highest wages in the club. 5,250. No, actually, that's not true. We have one higher than that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very, very high for what we get. Uh, I, I don't think he's probably worth that. I mean, that remains to be seen, right? <laughs> 
Um, his contract is uh, a long one as well, so I really hope this one is gonna pay off. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those deals where I was just looking at him and thinking, oh yeah, he can play this role, he can play that role, he's he got all the numbers, and but he's just not my first choice anywhere, right? He's 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 gonna play second fiddle to some of the other guys, so that's the problem. And I did pay 850k for him. 850k from Vibo in Denmark. So uh, that's uh, and and as you can see, the, like I said, this could be my mistake. This uh, this one could be the mistake, right? Um, yeah, I don't know what to say, but uh, it's it's uh, it could be a mistake. It could be decent. It's 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 um, he, he as I mean he has the numbers. It's not like that, but he's just not you know he's not the first deep line forward choice. He's not the first inverted wing back choice or inverted uh, forward choice he's just <clears throat> a very expensive support <laughs> so yeah there we go that was the mistake philip breidenberger that's a very solid strong german name but he's austrian so yeah i guess it's also a very strong austrian name oh, i love saying that i've gotta love saying this guy's name Breitenburger. No, Breitenberger. Oh, yes, I love that. You have to say it like that. It, it, it It's needed. It's needed. So what is this guy? Well, he is... Uh, well, that's, that's he's, he, this is a very interesting player. Now, first off, I got him for free. Yep, he's free. 20 years old, he's free, and he has this kind of numbers on him. 2,200 wages, even fairly cheap uh, in wages, running for four years. So uh, I think it's a win-win. Shoot from distance. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't really have good long shots, but eh, we'll see about that. We'll see how it goes. Now, this guy can play two roles uh, to, to our system. He can go up and be a deep lying support or uh, deep lying forward on support here. And he's absolutely adept to doing that, as you can see in his numbers. No worries about that role, I would say. But he could also go down in the midfield and actually play a central midfielder on attack or even on support. Because he's also good enough to do that. The only thing here we have to be worrying about is his concentration levels and also his tackling when it comes to the defensive things. But we do have a deep line playmaker in there and we do also have a halfback in there. So if we play him in the midfield, we just have to something that have something in there that is a little bit more, you know, defensive minded on the other side of things. But he can slot in both uh, uh, in both spots. He's not my first choice in either positionings, but. This is a money deal, right? This is a money deal. This is someone that could develop, be developed a little bit by us and be sold for millions, right? That's uh, that's what he is. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think it's a good deal. Oh, you thought I was uh, about to say that we were done. Nope, nope, we are not even halfway there yet, guys. We're not even halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah, there we go. It's gonna be a long episode. <laughs> so, this guy is uh, also one of those really, really, really solid deals. Now, um, I am calling him Victor Hans, because uh, I had another player called um, Hanslik. He was also called Hanslik, and I had another player called Hanslik. So, I, this guy's gonna be called Victor Hans, and uh, he's a central midfielder, 18 years old. 525 wages, I paid 52k for him. Only 52k, I think it was just a compensation deal. He is determined, he's level-headed. Look at those numbers, I mean, this, this guy could be as good as any of our midfielders, right? Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, and fun, fun fact, you can also go up here and play as a winger. I mean, he doesn't have the crossing, but otherwise, he's a pretty fucking good winger as well. <laughs> Advanced playmaker, maybe, yeah? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, so, central midfielder on support or attack or whatever. Uh, yeah, I think he could do that. Uh, I think I'm seeing him more as a support role. He is having high enough uh, tackling and marking to uh, to me liking him. Uh, he's not my first choice deep line playmaker right now. I think we have another one that might be ahead of him, but he might be the second choice on the right hand side. That's the only thing I can say uh, that, that that is something bad with this guy is that he has a really weak left foot. So he yeah uh, uh, yeah very one footed and his marking is apparently low ten. I don't think so. That's very uh, that's not very low. Crossing is really bad, so he's not really good out here on the wing. But um, overall, what a signing. Ivan Pospisil. Oh yeah, another Czechish player, 17 years old, who could become a homegrown, um, you know, club homegrown. And uh, he cost me, what was it? What was it? 
42k, I think. Yeah, yeah, 42k. So uh, a small compensation fee, and um, he's he's mostly he's he's. I bought him as an under 19 player, right? I uh, I have a couple of deals, actually quite a few, that is mainly bored to strengthen our under 19s and uh, to get some homegrowns in, right? To 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 develop some homegrowns. And but this guy is actually also my third choice on the left hand side. So he is in our main squad, and he is our third choice on the left hand side right now. So, uh, yep, I think it's a good deal. Again, it is someone that we can develop, someone who could be a homegrown, someone who could be worth a couple of millions down the road if he is developing nicely. I don't know, he's fairly ambitious, media friendly, which is not a great one, actually. I don't like that, um, because then they're going to talk a lot to the media and, you know, outspoken. We don't like, we don't like those. Uh, yeah, <laughs> contract running three years. I mean, I think it's a good deal. Uh, but he's the third choice. You're not going to see him that much this year, but it's, it's a pretty good deal. Jan Bernard, a Slovakian, 25 years of age, 2,500 wages, and he's, his contract is running on till 2030, so quite a long time, actually. I brought this guy in in the winter transfer uh, to replace Janosek and Solil if they were going, and Janosek is definitely going. So he's basically the Janosek replacement, right? Now, this guy is more so an attacking midfielder than a central midfielder, but we're going to play him in the central midfield on support or on attack. And you can see that mm, lovely 16. Long shot and also very good finishing, very good composure. Overall, really good attributes. Where is he lacking? Well, he's lacking in strength and also tackling and marking. But more so than ever, we are not going to win the ball in the midfield. We are going to win it out on the wing backs anyway. So it should be all right. I really like the look of this guy and he should be absolutely fine for us. Hopefully so, um, because we have a lot of midfielders and if he's not performing, some of the youngsters might take him out. <laughs> so he has to perform. Um, I mean, there is nothing here that is not suggesting that he shouldn't do that. So um, yeah, hopefully so. Durai Milan. Yes, a youngster again, 18 years old from Croatia. I have paid quite a good fee for him, 325k, which does sound like a lot and is maybe a lot, but he is 18, he could develop a lot. He is reserved in media handling, loving that one, and he's fairly professional, so... I could see this guy be uh, pretty good in a couple of years time. Very good, actually. Um, he is a third choice inverted winger or inside, for inside forward on either spot. He is a third choice on either, on either side. So he is going to get some play time. No worries. No worries. Um, he's not very good at finishing and composure and all that kind of, but he do have some good work rate, some good teamwork. So he will drop deep and... Uh, and hopefully help out in the play as well. This is a guy that I have bought to be that third guy uh, on those inside forwards. But I think he could. Uh, I think he could be a very good player for us. Uh, already now in the non-competitive, as you can see here, he he did really well in the first match. I don't remember what match it was, but yeah, um, really really solid little player. Hopefully for us, 18 years old. I mean, and and that that right there, that's also a big deal for me. Jumping reach of 16. So we. Even even being an inside forward and having that, that, that I have specifically looked for these players that is inside forwards that also have the height and the jumping reach and maybe the heading, but this guy doesn't have the heading, at least not yet, but uh, I have been looking for these players and this guy for the price tag on the wages and on a long contract, I think it is a solid deal for me. All right, so here, here starts some of the transfers you're going to think me mad, right? You're going to think me mad. This is a youngster that I bought for 47k. He is not a first team member, of course. He is playing in the under 19s, as you can see up here as well. This is a so this is a guy that if you if you think about it, the last couple of seasons our intakes have been meh, right? They have been oh, we have cut, had a couple, but not a whole lot of really good ones. So I'm 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 going out there and finding something where I think this guy could be really good. He might not be, but I think he's good. Why? Well, of course, his numbers is the first place you're going to look and you're thinking, okay, there's something about this guy. He got a couple of numbers here and there as a 17-year-old. The next thing I'm looking at is the personality. He's determined. So he's determined to be good, right? That is basically what it is. His hidden numbers are really, really good. He got evasive media handling, probably the, my favorite of them all, actually. Um, and and he was fairly cheap, right? I, I, I'm, I'm prepared now to 
to take those deals that cost me 50k or 100k for these youngsters. No problem, I can do that now because only one of them has to be good. Like out of 10 of those, only one of them has to be good and they pay for the rest. <laughs> and also, we do need homegrowns. We do need homegrowns. And if we don't have good intakes, well, I'm gonna go out there and try and find them instead. Now, don't look at the don't look at these current ability and potential ability because my staff is not good enough to judge that. I am. I'm good enough to judge this, and I think this guy could be good enough. Is he gonna become that? Put maybe, the, maybe, but. Don't judge it on, you know, the star system here. I'm just telling you guys, don't judge it on that. This guy could be a fantastic player and someone that is going to go for 500 or a million in uh, three years' time. He could be. So uh, just remember that. Chalopar. Thomas Chalopar. Yes, a 15-year-old. So you're again going to sit there thinking, What? You're bringing in a silver two-star to your team. What on earth? Yeah, but uh, again, same, same thing. I see his numbers and that number right there is suggesting and you know what some of the other numbers are not so low that i'm thinking he's not gonna get up to 12 or 13 on those in a couple of years time he's 15 right this guy could be pretty quality he could be quality he might be nothing but he could also be quality so uh, i paid 20k for this guy and he's on some very low wages running for a couple of years we'll see how he develops he got the reserved he got the professional status bring him in down to our good, and we do have a good youth academy now. Bring him down there, develop him a bit, and see how it goes in a couple of years' time. If he's not going to be any good, release him. I don't care. It's not big money. Now, this guy, on the other hand, this is where the money is. <laughs> William Uljenik. Now, he's not going to be a homegrown because he is Slovakian and he is 19. So there is a very good chance that he's going to go out on loan, also uh, making sure that we are not using these 1100 wages. But this is a profit signing, right? He, he Look at his numbers. He's pretty damn good. He's evasive. He's a perfectionist. I mean, I, I've gone out and gone really. I've really looked over this. This is something I really like. And uh, now, now when I have the money, I can go out and sign these guys. This guy cost me, I don't know if I already said it, but he cost me, what did he cost me? I forgot. 72k. I don't think that's high. I don't think that's high. This guy could be worth, again, millions if, if he's developing nicely over the next couple of seasons. So uh, I am very happy with this signing. Um, I am training him right now as a deep line uh, playmaker on support, but his positioning is ugh, piss poor. But uh, just because of how our system is, I am going to develop him like that. But he could probably potentially be way better as an advanced playmaker or attacking midfielder. Probably attacking midfielder actually would be really good. But anyway, he might go out on loan. I haven't found a loan deal for him yet, but I, I think he might go out on loan because, yeah, why not? And another one. 16-year-old <laughs> Balek, goalkeeper. And uh, like the rest, really high determination. Pretty high potential, I would say. Uh, unflappable, driven personality. Love it. 325 wages. What did I buy him for, Balek? 30k. Easy peasy. Done deal. A uh, couple of year signings. Fantastic. And let him play down there in the uh, under-20s or under-19s, sorry. And develop a bit and make us a new homegrown player. A new homegrown goalkeeper, that is. I mean, if we if you saw this guy in our intakes, I was like, whoa, ho, 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 jackpot. So, I mean, paying 30k for a jackpot, that's not really a whole lot, is it? Talk about jackpots. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. I have paid 675k for this guy, Kevin Sulek, right? 675k. I don't know how much money he's going to be worth in a couple of years' time, but um, he's not going to stay in our club. He is going back to the club he came from, back to Don Streda, who we have paid out at. Uh, yeah, they wanted him back on loan, and he wanted to go back on loan. Fine by me. We don't need him this season, and he can go back and develop even further in that club. Fine by me. I'm okay with it. But I wanted to sign this guy on a long contract, 1,700 wages, which is not getting covered. So we are paying... A lot of money, but this guy is profit. He uh, he's profit. So of course I could also loan him out because he would never be a homegrown anyway. But this is this is profit. <laughs> this is what profit looks like. <laughs> very good ball playing defender, half back even. Yeah, very good half back or ball playing defender, central defender on stopper role maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Now his marking and heading is not that high yet, and he's only 180. He reminds me of a he's a mix between Marcel and Howard because he's left-footed, but he doesn't have the height, so he's like a mix of those two. <laughs> but yeah, quality, quality signing, I think. Oh, here we go again, another silver star signing. Yep. <laughs> this time it is a striker. He's called Latell, and he's a free deal. He was uh, not contracted or anything. I was just. You know, I was just looking at a lot of youngsters and this guy popped up and I was thinking, why is he not contracted? I mean, he looks pretty good. He's reserved, he's resolute. He got 15 determination, 14 finishing, 11 composure. He got all the numbers to be a striker. And if you take a look at the advanced forward role, just a couple of numbers to go up. If these sevens is going up to 10, this go up to 10, 10, 10, 10 and 10. Bang on, you have a pretty half-decent, uh, you know, striker on your hand. Uh, and he's only 15, right? So, yeah, sure, I'll take him. <laughs> I'll, I'll take him. Fair enough. There we go. Last one. Yes, I promise, it is the last one so far. So far. He's a German, but he is gonna become a homegrown, because, at least if I keep him at the club, um, so another central midfielder, deep line playmaker, uh, he is uh, reasonable left footed as well, so he can play on either side. 975 wages, running for a couple of years, now this guy cost me quite a lot of money, 725k, so he was not cheap. And he could be a mistake, but I think there is, I think because he can be in homegrown uh, and also become a Czech, I think he can also become a Czechish player. Yes, he can. 1,071 days until he is getting that. So if we keep him at the club, he can definitely become an homegrown. So that's pretty solid. Um, but he's expensive, right? He was expensive. Even his wages is quite expensive. He is probably not going to get a lot of playtime uh, to begin with here in our club. I'm going to use him in the B, B squad and just play him a lot in the B team and hopefully develop him in, uh, then in there because I don't want to loan him out. I want him to become a homegrown. This is, you know, the second mm, po potentially bad signing uh, because you need to develop quite a bit. Now, we do have the reserved and driven uh, personality. Driven is probably one of my favorite personalities uh, because he, he, he's driving himself to become the best he can absolutely be as well. His, his hidden abilities is really good, right? So we, we'll see. We, we'll see if this guy is also going to be become, become as good as I hope he will. But we, I mean, that time will tell. Time will tell. So that was all the signings and uh, and also all the outs. Um, am, am I crazy? Am I crazy? I mean, I've spent a lot. I've spent a total of two million, but we have a total of three point one coming in. So <laughs> I don't know. Am I crazy? I don't think so. I think I think I'm doing good business here. Now we, uh, some of these signings were also done last season, but even last season, if we take a look at the overall of last season, right? Because some of the new signings here are from you know before uh, the reset or whatever you want to call it but yeah still we are still in the plus right we are still way in the plus our transfers are doing well we are creating more money while we are also signing better players and new prospects it's it's good business right it's very good business um so yeah, happy days. Absolutely happy days when it comes to the transfers. So the friendlies have been played, but because we won the FA Cup, uh, we did have this Super Cup again to play. This time against the Selena. I don't remember if we also played them the last time, two years ago. But uh, we won a 6-0. Easy peasy, done deal. I mean, they didn't really have anything. Not, not, nothing on target. So uh, first trophy bang on it's in house and if you can see this victor hans his first performance for us 9.43 assist <laughs> why wouldn't you why wouldn't you victor hans <laughs> so yeah a very very good game um love love to see it first trophy in the house so a couple of other things i want to talk about is the awards from last season i like i mentioned when we win something in the awards i want to show you but i couldn't show you in the last episode because that that it wasn't completed yet. The awards is not being shown before, you know, when it resets that thing in the mid of the season, whatever it is. So Puzzle Lake won uh, last season for uh, Best Foreigner. So there we go. Well done. And uh, we are happy about that award. That's for sure. And of course, we also won the manager of the season this time around. I don't know if I mentioned it the first time around, but we did We did win it when we won the, uh, the FA Cup that year. And now we have won the league and the FA Cup. And of course, we are 
the best player, so uh, or best, best player with the best manager, of course. We also have quite a few players in uh, team of the year, which is lovely. I mean, uh, that's 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 really nice to see that we finally uh, beat uh, Sparta Prague or Slavia Prague to it. So we got Mikolic. I don't know why, because. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the best goalkeeper, but whatever. How was Dark Sikovic? So our two central defenders are in there. Finson is in there on the left back. And Templeman is in there. And Pasalik, of course, is also in there. Do we have anyone in on the bench? Actually, we I think we got quite a few on the bench. Tori Grosso is on the bench. Janosek, Ukwu, Aikidi, Henrige. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. So we have pretty much the full bench here. That's lovely. Actually, I believe... Carlos Enrique also won Young Player of the Season. Yes, he did. We we won it last season as well, right? Let's see. I think I mentioned that. But now we're also winning it with Carlos Enrique. That's lovely. Two years in a row. Nice. Did we win the top goal score? Nope. No one near it. I, I, nope. <laughs> no, it's this guy, uh, Mihalik. So uh, from Victor Pilsen. Yeah, I remember seeing him a couple of times. He looked pretty damn good. 21 goals, 8 assists. So because of us and also Sparta Prague, because Sparta Prague actually got to the semi-finals in the Europa League against Villarreal where they got beaten, we do manage to get to the 10th spot above Ukraine, as you can see. And we are actually right now above the... Yeah, we are above Holland. Why is it called Holland? That's, uh, well, okay, but Netherlands, right? Uh, I, I, if I was Dutch, I would be a little bit upset about that one, but whatever. It's, it, it's, it's almost like calling Bohemia for the Czech Republic, right? It's, <laughs> that's, it's just an area in the Netherlands called Holland, so I don't know why they're calling it that in the game. But whatever, we are already above them for next season, which is very, very good. But because of that, as we can see here in the qualifiers, we do have a group stage for the Champions League now. Yes, the first spot in the league is a group stage now. That is very, very, very good. And you know what? I didn't know this, but it's actually already getting applied. We are in the group stages. <laughs> I didn't know that was the case. I thought it was next year after that that we would get that. But nope, we are getting it right away. I don't know if that's a thing or... I, I don't know, but we are in the group stages. It's saying it right here. Bohemians enter group stages on the... 15th uh, November or no that's September or whatever August actually so uh, yep we are in it we're uh, we're just gonna wait for uh, the stages to complete here uh, <laughs> the league path and the champions paths so uh, let's go into the rules so yeah we're in it we're in the group stages we are gonna get millions <laughs> we're gonna get some really tough opponents but if we do get knocked out in the third place we will get to the knockout phases of the European uh, the, the Europa League so it's not that bad, but uh, yeah, first time we're in the uh, Champions League, we're going to go directly into the group stages. That's lovely. That's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> Can't even, it's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like, what? <laughs> well, that's how good the Czech Republic is now. So, um, yeah, uh, about the other friendlies, uh, we are not scoring as much as I would like to. We are playing really, really well. You can see here I played Para Dubisi here um, just before we are playing them in the league. And uh, complete control with only one, game, uh, only one goal. So, uh, you know, that is what it is, I guess. Uh, the other friendlies is over here. So uh, we did lose one of the... Well, that's Salzburg, so no, no surprises there, I guess. They are like a club with 400 millions or something like that. Ah, 145, fair enough, but close to... <laughs> How many millions do we have now? That's the question. 87 million! Wow! Wow, sir! And look at those youth. Actually, I forgot about this. I should probably try and upgrade it. We have we have plenty of money. We have 12 mil million in the bank, and we got 6 million in the transfer budget as well, so that I'm not really spending a whole lot of. As you saw, I have spent some of it, but nowhere near the amount that we have. So, uh, and I don't want to spend it all. I want to spend it on our youth academies and our training facilities. So let's go in here and see if they want to increase it, maybe. I think that would be a nice thing to do. Improve training facilities. Yep, let's do that. We won't see it now. We will see it after the game we have played in the next episode. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anything here? Improve youth recruitment. I don't need to do that. I can find other players that are not from our youth. Um, but it would be nice to have it. 
Uh, since we do not have the Youth Academy up here, we can improve anymore. So maybe we should just improve the Youth Recruitment instead. Uh, they're also giving us a new contract, actually. That should also go through after this match. Uh, build a new stadium, buy a new stadium, expand stadium. How big is our stadium? It's a pretty small one. 5,000 and it's from 1914. Uh, 5,320, but it's, 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 a, it's a big deal. I mean, we... How many fans do we uh, have coming or showing up? We can see that... Hmm, nope, I need to cut it in here. Uh, insert column. Ooh. Attendance, right? So now we can see it. Uh, take some of the big home games. 2,400, yeah. So we don't really... We do, we do get full stadiums when it's against Slavia and Sparta Prague, but otherwise... Home games against Teplis here because it was... Okay, so we do almost hit our spot every single time here against the big opponents. I think, yeah, and, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, home here, 4,500, 4,690. I think it's time to upgrade. I think it's time to upgrade. Uh, it go it's gonna cost us, it's gonna cost us quite a bit of our... Uh, but. Also, it will be uh, good for the future. The question is, do we want to build a new stadium or do we want to expand the current stadium? I think it would be more advisable to buy a new stadium, but that's also going to cost us more. But I think it's going to be worth it. I actually think it's going to be worth it. Buy new stadium or buy stadium or build new stadium. I don't know what which one is actually best. Let's see what's available uh, on the market, I guess. Let's try and do that. We can just start. Yeah, let's plan uh, buying a new stadium because the one we have is just not big enough. It's old it's yeah let's try and do that we have the money for for it now we can't even play on our we can't even play inside our own stadium in the european competitions we need a bigger stadium man make it happen make it happen so yeah there we go so taking a look at the uh, current tactic here i think i have only changed one i actually don't noted it down i didn't write it down but i think i only made one change here and that is that we have an inside forward on attack on this side over here where we are... Uh, when we are forcing it down the right hand side, this inside forward is coming deep, uh, holding up the ball, right? And then this is inside forward is further forward. Actually, I forgot to take this out. I, I, want, I want this inside forward on the other side to shoot more often, not less often. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's something I forgot to do. Uh, yes, force it right. And let's go over here and do the same. Shoot less often. So now, now this side should shoot less often and hold up the ball to 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 increase our chances to get it over to the inside forward on the other side, or a central midfielder running into space, or something like that, right? Or waiting for the wing back to make the overlap on the inside forward. So that's that's the idea. Shoot more. Okay, I actually did change it on the other tactic. I just forgot it on on this one over here. That can happen. <laughs> that can happen. So there we go. That's the that's the new thing. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. As it was before. I believe the central midfield was on attack before. Or did I put it? But I don't remember if I did that before or after the preseason. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the tactics. There are not really a whole lot to say. It is almost the same deal. And uh, but of course, new players are in there, so that's good. Anyway, guys, that's about all for today. And the next episode is of course gonna be against some teams. Who is it? It is, well, we need to go to next <laughs> the next season here. So uh, we're going to play uh, Padobisi and also Khada Khalov in the first two games, which is probably not the most exciting games in the world. Um, well, there might be a lot of goals for us, but <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we're going go to get a good start. But uh, it's not, not the most exciting games in terms of, um, you know, winning the league. That's going to be Slavian, Sparta Prague. We might not even show those games. I might go further down before we are actually... I don't know when uh, when the draw is. When is the draw for the European competition? Uh, can we see that somewhere? Eh. Rules. Groups. Draw 27th of August. Yeah, well, that's a month away yet. So uh, not going to happen for a while. So that's not going to be in a, before in a couple of episodes we know who we are actually going to play in the group stages. So there we go. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you around in the new season. See you around, folks.